Hey everyone, this is Jay, also known as Jay Nemesis on eToro, where I am a popular investor. Uh, this is our weekly update for week 18. I know it's a couple of days late, it's been a really busy week. Let's take a look and see how we did. So our weekly stats this week, we have plus 2.23% uh, change to the portfolio, plus 1.44% realized profit, and 36 trades closed in total. Our top news this week... Uh, there has been drama in the Tesla earnings call with uh, Elon referring to contractors as barnacles and saying that barnacles need removing and that there are barnacles on top of barnacles. He also uh, hung up on an investor and he uh, took a 15-minute call from a retail investor as well. So uh, yeah, quite a bit of drama. I'm not sure how everyone's responding to it, but I mean, I still personally have uh, have quite a bit of faith in the company in its direction. Certainly, I can't really see anyone else leading that company at the moment. Uh, earnings are finally coming to a close. We had a crazy week full full of earnings. Uh, you'll hear about some of them during this uh, during this video, but uh, it's coming to a close. There's a few more left to come. Um, there's a few companies that kind of you know stick out and and do their earnings at weird times, but uh, for the most part, we we are now through it. So. Uh, hopefully, I can have a bit more time to post on eToro again. Buffett and Gates, so that's uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, are both bearish on Bitcoin. They've both made comments about it. Um, they, they actually made comments about it in the past as well. Gates has never really been a big fan of it, uh, nor Warren Buffett. But uh, yeah, the, <laughs> Bill Gates said that he would uh, short Bitcoin if he could. And Warren Buffett, yet again, described it as rat poison. Uh, <laughs> Yoni Ashia from Etara actually replied to to Bill and told him that uh, he's more than happy to open some shorts for him on Etoro. So that's kind of funny. Again, like this is kind of uh, you know, I, it doesn't really deserve to be a headline when you think about it because Warren Buffett is someone who is known for being a bit of a technophobe. Um, he's never really been uh, an early adopter in anything. He didn't buy Apple shares until I think it was 2015 or something. So he's uh, he's not one to really be uh, looking at. It's quite surprising that Bill Gates isn't a fan, actually. I find that a bit weird, but it suggests to me that they probably do not really understand uh, what Bitcoin really is. Our final piece of news uh, this week is Vitalik hinting at Ethereum sharding coming. So Vitalik tweeted uh, just, I think it was uh, Monday last week, um, he tweeted out uh, just a few little teasers about sharding and then uh, followed up on Reddit with a post uh, going a bit more in depth on in you know how it works and um, how it would be implemented, basically suggesting you know it's, it's kind of like Lightning Network. Um, in terms of implementation, at least. But, uh, you know, it's it's something that I think has been a bit overdue with Ethereum. If you uh, if you look at how long it's taken them to, to get Casper on the move, and even even their previous updates, uh, Byzantine and everything else, it's, you know, Ethereum is moving pretty slowly at the moment, and they're facing some stiff competition from EOS, from Cardano, from a bunch of other newer platforms. So, uh, it's good to see some progress. I will, I'll be holding my breath until I actually see it really start getting rolled out and tested. On to the crypto recap. So uh, Bitcoin finally broke through 9K. It actually went up to about 10K um, before pulling back a little bit um, at the start of this week, just as the weekend was coming to a close. Um, I'm still pretty cautious in bitcoin um I, you know i've i've been one that's been cautious throughout this this rally even though you know i suggested that we had already bottomed uh, a couple of people have suggested that uh, we are actually still in a bear market and this is just a, a trap but um, i'm not sure if i really subscribe to that that line of thought uh, i do think that we've been going up a little bit too quickly and i think it's it's good that you know we kind of take our time and move up gradually but uh, for me, it's it's not really you know a safe. Uh, it's not safe to call it as a, a bull market again until we are back up above 13k. So um, that's that's kind of what I'm w watching for. I have been trading it reasonably actively, but uh, nothing too exciting to report about. Uh, Stella, I've uh, closed quite a lot of positions in Stella recently. You know, it's it's been a, a nice one to trade. It's been sitting in a nice range, but. Um, you know, I, I just feel like uh, I needed to reduce my exposure a little bit since we were heading up so rapidly. Um, so I did buy back in Lara and a few of the other cryptocurrencies such as Dash. In fact, I even opened a trade in Ethereum, even though I'm meant to be reducing exposure. But, you know, just a, a quick trade. 
Dash Dash has been um, a bit quiet recently. They had some bad news coming out of Japan. I actually did read somewhere that it was fud and that none of it was true, but I, I can't confirm that. I haven't actually uh, dug into it too much, but there's a lot of talk about um, a crackdown on the privacy coins over in uh, in Japan. So Monero, Zcash, and, and Dash really at the forefront of that, um, that piece of news. Uh, on the plus side, they have released yet another uh, teaser demo on YouTube for Dash Evolution. I have not watched this one yet. The last one was uh, something that was really, really quite quite exciting, um, for me at least, as, a, as an enthusiast to see working um, on a blockchain. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen this one yet, so I'll let you know when I have a look at it. I'll probably uh, write a little post about it um, during the week once I've had a look at it. Um, but overall, though, with Dash, you know, I think uh, I think it's performed worse than most stuff. But this is this is the worst time to be cutting exposure to Dash. I think I think it's better off to just kind of wait and uh, and you know give give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, they've they've been in these kind of positions where they've been lagging behind the competition and they've always sort of uh, caught up um, later down the line. So I'm still pretty confident that Dash is going to have a good year. Uh, Ethereum, I've continued to re reduce my position sizes in Ethereum. There's not really too much more to say than that. I've done a couple of trades here and there. I actually opened a trade and it almost hit its take profit just before um, the price dropped uh, earlier um, this week, shortly before recording this. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too bullish on Ethereum really, uh, certainly not compared with EOS. So speaking of EOS, EOS has had an insane week very very substantial profits um again like it it feels like uh it feels like the market is really trying to price in you know exactly where this is going to sit once once the dust settles after the main net has launched um interestingly uh block one who are the guys behind eos moved i think it was seven hundred thousand uh ethereum tokens onto the bitfinex exchange my gut is that they are planning on selling that and buying EOS with it to help pump EOS uh, a little bit higher. And of course, I guess they want to own more EOS tokens. Uh, and of course, it's it's you know it's hurting Ethereum at the same time. So if if that's true, then that's pretty substantial because we're talking about half a billion dollars worth of uh, Ethereum that could get sold and exchanged for EOS. So this could have a very substantial impact on the price. Again, if you look at you know the the market cap of uh, EOS, <laughs> you know this is a very very large chunk of it. Moving on to the stock recap. So Snapchat, I actually closed a couple of positions before their earnings. It's always really volatile. I wanted to steer clear of it. Uh, of course, I regret it now because we've we've seen the price uh, drop substantially. Um, but you know, I'm you know, it's it's something that I'm going to go back into into trading again. I seem to do pretty well with Snapchat, and uh, as I've said numerous times before, it's something that's nice to short uh, when the markets are are bullish overall so it's nice to have a bit of a hedge the nasdaq 100 uh closed uh one of my shorts uh right as the market bottomed i timed it pretty well actually um i've still got another one open which is acting as a hedge in fact i think i might have even reopened another one since i wrote this in this document um alibaba so alibaba had their earnings as well uh it seems to have gone down well with the market overall um it it looks like it's pushing for for some new highs um i haven't actually dug into their earnings quite yet everything else i've done alibaba is the last one i need to do now so uh i'll, I'll let you know if i have any uh outstanding thoughts on it the the big uh the big earnings i guess that were exciting to me so square they had a really really strong earnings interestingly they sold uh over i think it was actually 34 million not 36 i can't remember it was one of the two uh 34 36 million dollars worth of bitcoin um, this actually only made them like 200 thousand in profit but it's still you know very substantial volume to a market that's kind of interesting demographically you know i think most of them are just square customers who kind of wanted a bit of exposure to it so pretty interesting there were loads and loads and loads of questions uh, about blockchain during the earnings call uh, they launched in the uk uh, so you know they're, they're doing a lot of stuff and of course they they just agreed to purchase weebly which is effectively um uh, a pretty simple website creation tool so there's a lot going on at square it's really quite exciting uh, and i think the, the stock's got really good potential for the rest of the year
similar to Square, Shopify also had some pretty strong earnings. Weirdly, uh, they dropped really, really heavily uh, straight after the earnings call, pretty much. Um, myself and Wesley were both on eToro, sort of ranting and raving about it, wondering why it's dropped so far. But uh, it has rebounded substantially. I did buy the dip, but I actually sold it quite early, so I didn't really see the full benefits of that. But, you know, I still had another position open as well. So, uh, yeah, it's all ended pretty happy for us. We didn't make as much as we could have, but we did make some good money. And, uh, again, like Square, I'm still pretty bullish on them moving forwards. So we'll see where it goes. But uh, both of those companies, I think, really looking pretty strong at the moment. Activision Blizzard, final one. So Activision had an interesting thing happen. Uh, their earnings report was falsely uh, pushed out to the markets. Uh, I think it came from the Wall Street Journal. I'm not entirely sure. Please don't hold me to that. Don't sue me if you're the Wall Street Journal for saying that it might have been you. Um, so this this caused like an insane period of volatility. The stock you know, went up and down by a massive amount in a very short period of time. Uh, because obviously uh, they were massively underperforming in what was leaked. Uh, the actual earnings were much stronger, in fact, a record quarter for them. Um, and, you know, interestingly from this, I think there's quite a bit of interesting stuff from this call that I that I picked up on, which was that they spent a lot of, a disproportionately a large amount of time talking about the impact of games like Fortnite and PUBG, which are known as uh, Battle Royale style games. Uh, interesting use of language. They kept referring to it as a as a game mode, and then when they went on to talk about Call of Duty and how how they were going to innovate in that area, answering some of the questions from the investors on the line, they again referred to uh, game modes. And you know, I I think about it. I look at uh, zombie mode and things like that, which have been pretty common and, and popular on the uh, Call of Duty titles recently. And it leads me to believe that Blizzard. Blizzard and Activision are both potentially, or at least one of them, looking at uh, adding some sort of uh, similar play styles into their games. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I mean, there's a chance they could even be working on an entirely new title, but it's definitely somewhere that they have effectively lost ground to the rest of the market, but they see it as an opportunity. Um, so I'm kind of keeping my eye on it, and I think there's potentially some some good potential there for getting in before they announce something. Our realized trading stats this week. So we have a total of 36 trades closed, 33 of which were profitable and three of which were not profitable. Average trade profit was 5.59% and average trade loss was 5.35%. Uh, our most traded was Stella. As I said, I closed lot, lots of positions there and our realized profit for the week. So that's the trades that were actually closed this week was uh, plus 1.44%. So that leaves us looking uh, reasonably healthy as we move into May. Plus 1.4% on the portfolio. We actually ended uh, down on, on Friday, so I suspect we're actually somewhere a bit closer to around plus 2% for May. If we look at the weeks, you can see that it's been uh, consistent green across the board for several weeks in a row now. Hopefully we can keep this up and really start to... Uh, push all of you guys who've been with me since January, February back up into the green and uh, everyone can be happy and make money together again. <laughs> so looking forward, um, there's some interesting um, kind of themes that I'm looking at at the moment in terms of uh, investing. I think Take-Two and Activision are both uh, stocks that should start to perform a bit better. You know, looking after listening to the Activision earnings call and, you know, recently we had the Red Dead Redemption trailer come out for Take-Two. Um, it, it feels like those two stocks have actually been relatively stagnant when compared with the rest of the market over the past three, six months or so. So I'm looking at potential to uh, increase my positions a little bit there and see if we can make some uh, some strong returns as uh, as we move towards some of the big uh, gaming events of the year. The other, I, I guess the other theme is uh, Shopify and Square. So again, two pretty similar companies in the same sort of market. Um, both of these have had phenomenal growth over the past two years or so. Uh, the last year, especially 2017, was amazing for both of these companies. Uh, and I think that there's good potential moving into 2018, you know, after both their earnings reports, I was again impressed uh, by both of them. So uh, especially Square, actually, I think Square really is uh, trying to keep on that really innovative cutting edge of uh, of what they can offer to people. 
Um, interestingly, kind of related to that, but kind of not really. Um, I'm I'm feeling a bit bearish on Amazon. Um, with the increase in the fees for Prime, I find myself using Amazon less and less recently, and generally uh, the way I behave tends to be a, a suspiciously good indicator for, for how everyone else behaves, um, from my experience. But, you know, with the, the rise of Shopify and Square um, and some of the other websites like Etsy and things like that, which are really helping some of the smaller businesses really reach consumers without having to go through Amazon, um, with increased pressure from the likes of Netflix and Spotify competing with Amazon's um, services, I feel like Amazon are maybe spreading themselves a little bit too thin and starting to struggle in a few areas. Again, even in uh, even if you look at things like uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, the rise of Microsoft Azure, the, the rise of Alibaba's cloud computing, um, these are things that I think are starting to potentially maybe not hurt Amazon, but, but perhaps slow them down a little bit. So I think there's there's more growth potential in other areas of the market. Amazon will probably still do fine, but I think uh, I think it's one that I I see a little bit more risk in uh, for 2018. So that pretty much sums it up for this week, guys. Uh, it was a bit more of a like stock focused uh, update this week. Um, you know, some some slightly more broad sweeping statements about you know where my sentiment is and, and where I think disruption is coming potentially to the markets. But uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't seen it. Please do go and check out the live stream that I did last week uh, about EOS. It's two hours long, so if you know if you don't have time for that, then maybe you know give it a pass or something. But it's a good introduction for you, those of you who are maybe trying to understand exactly what EOS is uh, and where it fits in and why I'm so bullish on it in comparison with uh, Ethereum, for example. So it, it may be worth having a look at. You can find it on my YouTube channel. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about this post and this video. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the next update. So I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching, everyone.